Hillary Clinton telling Congress tonight how it should proceed with its investigations into the president. She writes, in 1998, the Republican-led House rushed to judgment. That was a mistake then, and it would be a mistake now. Watergate offers a better precedent. Then, as now, there was an investigation that found evidence of corruption and a cover-up. But a former pollster for President Bill Clinton is saying the opposite tonight. Quote, Trump is no Nixon. Let's turn to Fox News senior political analyst Britt Hume. Great to have you with us as always, Britt. Thank you, Shannon. Glad to be here. Okay, Britt, you remember the coverage of Watergate and of President Nixon. What do you make of Hillary Clinton drawing parallels between then and the special report counsel, uh, special counsel report with now President Trump? Well, it's a little difficult. It's certainly true that articles of impeachment were drawn up against President Nixon, but he 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 uh, resigned before they could be voted on by the by the by the House. So he was never actually impeached, although it looked fairly clear that he was going to be. Clinton, of course, was impeached, and he was not convicted by the Senate, and so he stayed in office. So I'm not sure that her argument that that the you know the Watergate impeachment was better handled than the Clinton one was because the, if you're talking only about the House of Representatives, one of them succeeded, and the other one was short short circuited by her resignation. Mm -hmm. And look, that 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 list of charges in that giant volume that Kenneth Starr, the the independent counsel in the Clinton case, sent over to the House was pretty comprehensive. The fact that they didn't see the need to completely reinvent the wheel, it seems to me, is quite understandable. Well, and so now the House picks up with these investigations, the Democrats leading key uh, committees, there are all the committees there, uh, and they say that they have a duty to protect this country. Here is what Con Congressman Eric Swalwell, a Democrat, but also running for president in 2020, here how, is how he describes where they go from here. I was a prosecutor and I went to court. My pencils were sharpened, my subpoenas were ready, my witnesses were in the waiting room, and the exhibits were ready to be presented because I only got one shot. And it's not a road we want to go down, but it's a road that we may have to go down to save the democracy. Uh, Britt, I have the sneaking suspicion that the president is saying go for it over the White House. I mean, he very much likes a fight, he likes a foil. And going to 2020, it almost seems as if he is daring them to do this and to try to impeach him. Well, I'm not sure, quite sure about that, Shannon, because he wants to fight them on the subpoenas that seem to be flying in his direction right now. And, uh, you know, he has, I think, a case on that. Congress does have sweeping powers to acquire information for its investigations and especially for an impeachment. So that all remains to be worked out. As for what Swalwell said there, uh, we keep hearing this over and over again that, you know, what, what this is about is a fight to save democracy as if democracy is under serious and continuing threat from President Trump. It's fun for his critics to talk about that, but I don't see it. Um, it seems to me that the institutions of our democracy are still functioning. Um, and, you know, President Trump does all kinds of complaining and belly aching. But time and time again, we find that his bark is far worse than his bite. Well, you mentioned this whole fight now we're probably going to have over subpoenas because they've been coming from House Democrats to keep members like Don McGahn, former White House counsel, other documents, other players are likely to follow. I heard today both from uh, Chairman Nadler and Chairman Cummings that if the White House, as they're vowing to kind of fight these things, if they do so and telling people not to testify or to turn things over, that it's yet another, they use the word, uh, you know, act of obstruction by this president. So is it more for the Democrats about getting those people up to the Hill or those documents to testify? Or is it now building a case of obstruction against the president, or both? I think it's it's kind of twofold, Shannon. Uh, I think on the one hand, if they could get him out of office before the election, they'd like to do that. I don't see practically with the amount of time that's available how they can, but I think they would like to. And short of that, they would like to use these investigations to so damage him in the public eye that he would be easily defeated. And I, so I think that you know for them it's kind of win-win either way this goes. Uh, the president has vowed to fight them on that, on on uh, on grounds that he has privileges mm -hmm. that would prevent, for example, Don McGahn from testifying, or that would allow him to to prevent Don McGahn from testifying, and that is an interesting legal question that is likely, I think, to end up in the courts. Um, but because I don't think the law on it is at all clear. Yeah, because there are those today who have said, listen, he, he waived privilege when he didn't stop McGahn from talking to special counsel. The president says this is different because he sees it as a completely partisan attempt. But, yeah, he said they'll take it all the way to the Supreme Court, and maybe that's where it ends up. That as, as for the, the legal side of this, it is argued that because McGahn was permitted by the, by the uh, 
by the president mm -hmm. to testify for what some 30 hours before Robert Mueller's investigators that that, that his privilege, his executive privilege, uh, pretending to advice given directly to the president is thereby waived. However, I know that the president's lawyers are going to say, "Wait a minute, McGahn was was testifying before a fellow employee of the executive branch, a a, a subordinate official in the D Department of Justice." That is one thing, and that having him testify to a second, to a different branch of government, to with the Congress, is quite another. And I don't think the courts have ever resolved that in any authoritative way that you can point to. They have recognized that such a thing as an executive privilege. The courts have also recognized Congress has sweeping powers to investigate. So we'll see how that plays out. All right. I look forward to covering it no matter where it goes in the courts, and I'll be on the steps if it ends up at SCOTUS. Um, Britt, thank you very much always for your time. You, you bet, Shannon.